east coast of South Africa is the city of Durban. With its warm climate year-round, it is ideal for holiday-goers looking for an ocean getaway on the warm Indian Ocean. But this warm climate and coastal region is also perfect for other residents. Snakes The greater area of Durban is home to about 20 species of snakes with many highly venomous species, such as the infamous black mamba, but also other species such as the Mozambique splitting cobra. And with both humans and snakes living here, it is easy to understand that sooner or later they will bump into each other. So today I'm going to be joining Nick Evans, who is known to be one of the go-to guys when it comes to snake rescues. He is a professional snake rescuer and also a reptile conservationist here in the area of Durban. So for anybody who has a phobia of snakes, I suggest you turn off this video now and otherwise buckle up because I think it's going to be quite the adventure. Okay, Nick, so what type of snakes can you expect uh, to find here in the area of Durban? Um, so our most common snake is the spotted bush snake, which is totally harmless. Brown house snakes, which are also harmless. They're the most common. We do have highly venomous snakes like the black mamba, that's the most famous and the least liked. Um, mm. There's quite a lot of them. We've got a lot of um, habitat for them here, uh, a lot of food. There's a lot of rats, feral kittens, they do like dussies. Um, got a lot of Mozambique spitting cobras, which aren't a snake catcher's favorite. Uh, Ooh, I can imagine. <laughs> uh, green mambas are on the coastline, but they're a bit scarce. We've got a lot of interesting snakes. We've probably got around 20 species in the greater Durban area, mm -hmm. so we're quite lucky here. And like, what are the main misconceptions about snakes here, or what are the, the common thoughts that uh, normal residents would have, which I don't know, wouldn't line up with the actual reality. I guess the most common one is snakes are here to kill people and they attack people. Mm -hmm. That is that is what they do. Um, okay. But that's obviously not true. Okay. okay, so we've arrived at the location where the releasing will be done. But first, the snakes need to be measured. We have uh, Nick and Warren who are going to be doing the measuring. And uh, then they will be released into the bush. So, Nick, why do you actually have to measure the snakes before uh, they get released? It's just so, uh, like, if we ever catch them again, we can see how much, can see how much have grown, and, and take a, a weight, so we mm -hmm. can see if they, if their health is like, if they're maintaining a good health, or if it's decreasing, or. Yeah, because you microchip the snakes as well, so you also know which snake is which. Yeah, so we microchip them. It's the same one, dogs and cats. Get. Okay. The exact same one. So it's not a tracker, it's just gives the snake an ID number. When they are caught again, yeah. for example. Yeah, so if we catch it, we scan it. It's, it's going to help us understand suburban mambas better. Because they're here and we need to see how best to conserve them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because it's, it's a very interesting topic. Like we have a very highly venomous snake living among people and we see like hardly any bites. Mm. And we're just trying to understand them better. Okay, so I'm going to have a poop in. <laughs> you can take the middle if you want to have that. Okay, I just need to come forward. Forward, 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 forward. Okay. Just going to take a little bit. Oh, okay, well when he is like extended, 230. Okay. I just need to come forward a little bit. Okay. Forward, 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 forward. Okay. Okay. 225. That's a female. Because the probe's not really going anywhere. You don't push hard, mm -hmm. but if it's a male, it goes quite far down like that. Oh, sure. So it's a female. And then... It's the... Quite relaxed. Just gonna scan it. This is the... There you go. Just wanna check there's nothing. Mmm, this is the microchip reader? Yeah. Boom, wow, face is so quick. Yeah. Okay, one experience I did not expect to get today is have my hands smell of um, whatever came out of the mamba early on. It smells very interesting. Um, I'm going to have to wash my hands. <laughs> Thank you. Boom, done. Oh, sorry, lady. There you go. <laughs> Okay, so there was somebody helping us with the measuring, which was Warren. He lives uh, pretty close to the area we were measuring. And um, he has a, a wild mamba. 
and he just called that he spotted it so that's why we're heading there now so that Nick can also uh, scan the mamba see if it's a known mamba stuff like that so got to get there quickly <laughs> It went over there and down the back. So I'm going to try and push it up. I'm not going to show something right now. Find it here on that side. This female, approximately. Two plus, two and a half. Two and a half plus meters. I've had the worst luck with mamba so far this year. Don't surprise me if it's gone. Okay, Nick, how is the luck going with um, regards to the mamba is what you were saying? It's been a tough year so far. I've missed most of the mamba calls I've got. <laughs> yeah. I haven't even had that many mamba calls, but yeah. But it happens. Hopefully you get some luck soon. <laughs> Well, like uh, you are hoping for, I'll try and bring the luck for yeah, this you one. Bring the luck, yeah. <laughs> so, unfortunately, not. We didn't find the mamba. Uh, on the other hand, we're standing in a very cramped room. I have zero experience with snakes, and if it is a two and a half meter female, I don't know which way I'm going if it does come out. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Maybe Warren calls back later. Maybe not. Anyways, we have to go and release the snakes that still need to be released. So a lot of the homes I go to are um, homes where there's a lot of rubbish or wood piles, things like that, and that's great habitat for rats. Mm. So they're often drawn to that. People also have a lot of geckos around their house. It's hard to control that. Um, so snakes come for the geckos. Some people have green swimming pools where it's just a frog breeding ground and the snakes come for that. So really they come to homes for shelter and for food. Yeah. And people usually provide them with that. So another thing that also happens is that when uh, people get gardens that are filled with trees and stuff like that, sometimes it's a case that they actually take out all the trees and put in just like cement um, down. A lot of people cut down the trees and plants because they think it's the... it's that's what's attracting snakes. But what's attracting snakes is all the rubbish in the garden or... Yeah. yeah, like wood piles and bricks and that sort of thing. The cavities that's, where they can also. Yeah, like that's in. what attracts them. Messy storerooms. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so, moral of the story don't chop the trees, just clean up your yard. So, the first two snakes that are going to be released are the Mozambique spitting cobras. These snakes don't only, well, they can't only bite, but they also spit their venom. Um, so, it's very. Yeah, you have to be very careful with your eyes, your mouth, stuff like that. Okay, so when trying to find a place like for um, different species of snakes, like where, how do you yeah, find a place to release them? Um, so we generally try not to take them too far um, because, you know, they have a role to play in the environment. So, mm -hmm. so we try not to take them too far, but we're going to just release them in an area where obviously there's no people, so there's enough food mm. um, and habitat and... Those are the main things, and main it's not thing. too difficult to find, thankfully. Mm -hmm. Although, with people constantly encroaching on natural mm -hmm. areas, that is that is one challenge we... we okay, can. so, round two, and a bigger one. Boom. Oh, my word. Okay, can come closer. Okay, he's already... Oh, wow. Yeah, there he goes. So here we have two non-venomous snakes. So this is the spotted spot. bush snake. Yeah. It's the most common one. The most common one. Non-venomous, completely harmless. This one's actually gonna shed, that's why it's not so bright. Sure, well it's beautiful. Okay. They disappear pretty quick. Boom, off he goes. Not bad. So not put on the ground. Okay. So it's a brown house snake. The brown house snake. It's a great one for rodent control. Also because it's non-venomous. So good one for people to have in the garden. Cute man. Very cute. You can go whichever way he wants to go. And off he goes. Yeah, so the last of the batch are the two black mumbers. For this we're going to be walking, well, a little bit further, 
just to make sure that they are at a safe distance as well. Cool, so there's a little Mozambique spitting cobra at someone's, looks like someone's door. Uh, and they're actually quite close to our location. Oh. So they have the hatchling somewhere but they're not even sure. They're not, they've lost sight of it. Generally when people lose sight of it, you don't find them. Mr. Mamba, or Mrs. Mamba should I say. Waiting to release. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Miss Mamba, ready to go home. <laughs> mm. He's going straight down. Oh, wow, but look how huge! Oh! Yeah, she's stuck with her head at the bottom there. Okay, she's coming. She's turning around. Oh. Oh, there she is. Oh, she slid back. Oh, she's gone up, she's gone. Yeah, she's gone. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I don't want to... Come, 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 come. Okay, I'm not going to be able to... Oh, there we go. There she's gone. Okay, you can come closer. She's gone up the tree. You've made it out of love. All the snakes have been released safely. Now it's time to get a cold drink. Because it is so hot here in Durban. It's really wild. As you can see, I have made it safely back to my place and today was just for me so exciting to join Nick and be able to join him and see what he does uh, when it comes to the snakes and also being able to release two of the most, well, I think insane snakes that I have ever seen, the black mamba and the spitting cobra. You know, when you're living in a place where you have the forests and you have this climate and you have people living so close to this habitat, it is pretty logical that you're going to have interaction at some point. So for the future, it's just about thinking how we can coexist instead of having people, you know, kill snakes or try and get snakes and then accidentally get bitten. And this is, of course, where education and stuff like that comes in. I thought it was pretty, pretty awesome to join him today and learn about the snakes and just be out there. But yeah, for now, I'm going to say goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you never want to miss another video. And guys, I'll see you on the next adventure.